the plot of The Revenant circles around DiCaprio's character of Hugh Glass on a path of vengeance. But what Alejandro Iñárritu manages to do is elevate this simple premise by weaving the themes of revenge, violence and spirituality within the context of 19th century South Dakota. Iñárritu pulls ideas from the likes of Andrei Tarkovsky and Ingmar Bergman to make The Revenant a timeless fable that welcomes us into reality, where emotional and physical endurance matters most in the wilderness. The relationship between Glass and his son Hawk is the main point of interest that drives the story forward. Being a half Native American isn't easy for Hawk. Racial abuse and hatred against his race only fuels his need for survival. Amidst fur trappers such as Fitzgerald, it isn't easy to shape a life of courage and trust when an outburst can ultimately end your life. No matter how hard Glass tries to shield his son from the harshness of humans, they exist in a world where one wrong step results in danger. However unrelenting nature may be, it directs people down the destined path. Nature doesn't choose who lives or who dies. There may be a blistering cold or a bear waiting to rip someone's organs off, but in the end, humans determine the fate of man. Glass raised his son to be the opposite of Fitzgerald. He refined Hawk to be one with nature, to seek high and low in order to survive. While others oh, shit. leech off produce one by others, not truly outlining their masculine norms. When Glass gets back on his feet, he finally sees the world for what it is. Life really is unfair. His struggle with nature clearly parallels the struggle Hawk had with bloodthirsty humans. Simply put, Emmanuel Lebeski's work in this film is genre shifting. The overwhelming scale of the wilderness he captures effectively contrasts with the human savagery these people are accustomed to. Inyarito and Lubeski opted for a more Malikian approach, an artist who also connects nature to spirituality. The camera doesn't shy away from the harsh reality. Instead, Inyarito aims to get up close and personal to the characters. We feel Glass's need for redemption. We can sense his yearning for Fitzgerald's head all conveyed using a wide lens where small movements and expressions are highly exaggerated. The camera squeezes in on glass to suggest that there is always something out of reach for him to obtain. Inurita uses the vertical plane to contrast the living and the supernatural. Glass looks up at the heavens to receive a message from God, but instead, he sees an apparition of his wife. His love literally places her above everything else as she symbolizes hope, strength and guidance. He then dreams about his son in an abandoned church and goes to hug him. He first stands up and then slides downward into misery and into reality where his goals need to be achieved to reach catharsis. We can also see the rebirth of Glass as he emerges from the carcass below the cliff, emerging like a naked newborn, staring into the dawn, metaphorically being given a second chance. Much of the film, we see how he gradually regains his ability to hunch, stand, hobble and finally walk, showing his rebirth and progress towards reuniting with his family above. The free-floating camera gives character to the surrounding environment as well. The characters are framed so that the wilderness engulfs their movements and actions, a reminder of the dominance nature has to abide by Mother Nature's rules. The use of natural light hitting the contents of the foreground and the background conveys a perpetual motive for winter as death. It's omnipresent, unyielding and blinding. This can also be applied to the savagery of humans, as the camera refuses to cut in between action but instead lingers like an omniscient being. The camera hones in on how man-made violence ruins the triangle of nature and how the tarnishing acts of humans will one day wipe out the beauty of nature. The opening battle alone perfectly illustrates how the evil of humans can disrupt a peaceful ambience. 
These heavily choreographed sequences are just one of the many ways to bind action and character with intrigue. And in this case, the audience themselves are engulfed in a world where violence defines a way of life. What I think is most noteworthy is the way Inuriti documents something that anyone can relate to. It's about how far a person is willing to go, not only for the ones they love, but for the people they hate. The feeling of hatred in this case is born from the emotion of love. A death of a loved one fills the courage to seek bloodshed for an enemy. This is how the cycle of nature works. How a world where the abundance of society allows violence to be the only form of recognition and respect. Inyaritu intended to look at the way man fits into the natural world and the way nature fits into the man-made world. And from my point of view, he succeeds in that regard. By living along the border, Glass is a man without a solid identity, neither as a white man nor as an Indian. Instead of choosing one race, Glass makes the parallel choice of life over death and justice over injustice. As he says in the end, this was his motivation to survive. <sighs> His search for justice gives him an identity that is perfectly suited for this place and his circumstance. A man who is broken, scathed, yet awake. A revenant.